Seiji Kanai is now and probably always will be best known for his game Love Letter, which has sort of taken the gaming world by storm over the last couple of years because it's a very simple and light deductive card game, but it has some very cool strategic elements to it. It's a game that I personally really love, and a lot of people don't know that Seiji Kanai has sort of made his name over in Japan by producing these small, some would say, micro card games. He's actually made a lot of them, and they're just now slowly trickling over here, courtesy of the company AEG. The most recent one, and the one we're going to talk about today, is called My Star. Now, the theme of My Star is that you're actually each playing geisha, and you're trying to be the best geisha possible. Now, AEG has sort of very thinly rethemed. Uh, the theme of this with the Legend of the Five Rings universe. The, they've replaced all the artwork and they never explicitly mentioned the Legend of the Five Rings universe, but it does say the Emerald Empire, which is the setting of uh, L5R. Um, but you, you're not going to see any of the mystical fantasy elements or like samurai fighting in this game. This is all a game about, like I said, being the best geisha possible. Now, I want to clear one thing up because I was kind of surprised that even today, people still have a misconception about what geisha actually are. I think there's this negative connotation that is associated with them that they're just like essentially prostitutes, if I might use the word. But that's really not what they were. I'm sure that some geisha and establishments were like that back in the old days. But what a geisha essentially was, was like the masters of entertainment of their time. Think of it as like a very classy, like burlesque houses is what they were because they would just... You know, there was, they were just like, the, the geisha houses were basically centers of the arts as far as music and actual, like, uh, painting, calligraphy, um, things like that. Just, per, you know, dancing and plays. That's what geisha houses were for. And so this game definitely takes that sort of classier approach and tries to dispel some of those negative connotations. Each player takes control of a different geisha and you're trying, it, it's like all of Sage's other games, it's basically just a, like card game. You're trying to put out cards representing either advertising to promote your establishment or to uh, bring it, that will help you bring in guests, which are also going to help to make your establishment more noteworthy and to give you income and things like that. And whoever has the most income by the end of the game is going to be the winner. The game is played over a series of rounds, but I don't want to talk too much about it. Let's go ahead and do a brief overview of the game, and then we'll come back and I'll give you my final opinion. All right, let's talk about My Star. This is a game all about being the best geisha possible in Feudal Japan or Legends of the Five Rings world, whichever you want to think of this as. You're going to do that by trying to use advertisers and your own charms to tr attract guests to your establishment. The more guests that you have and the, the better guests that you have, the more money and therefore victory points you earn. Whoever has the most points at the end of three rounds is the winner, and hence this game comes with this handy dandy notepad to keep track of your scores over three rounds. The game goes up to six players. And and please note that over here you also have a little reminder that in each round of the game you have an increasing number of starting cards, five, then six, then seven. So once you've established who's going to go first and you all have drawn your cards for whichever round that it is, then you're going to start playing. Now you have five different actions you can take on your turn, but the main actions you're trying, going to try to take are playing these cards as either advertisers or guests. Now guests are the main way that you're going to be able to win the game. Both cards can be played as either an advertiser or a guest, but in order to play them as a guest, you're gonna to need to meet the requirements. So up here you need a five in green, which is one of the different requirements. There's three different colors and symbol requirements that you need. Uh, then you have the food symbol, which is blue. So for the Akasa, you'll need two. And uh, here's another one for the Ronin. You'll need this entertainment symbol. In this case, you would need two of this entertainment symbol. And if you play them as guests, that's when you're going to get these victory points, which are all, always the little yellow token here. Down here at the bottom, if you choose to play these cards as advertisers, here's where you will be able to actually use these stats to play more guests. So for instance, if I, were to if I had the capability, in other words, I had two red out here to play this Ronin as a guest, I'd put him up here. But if I chose to play him as an advertiser, I would just keep him up down here, ignore everything else on the card, and that would enable me to uh, much make me much more likely to be able to play red cards later on. And same thing with the actor. If I played the actor as an advertiser instead of as a guest, I'd get plus one to all three of these stats. I would just keep stacking them down here. Now, every time you play an advertiser down on the board, you have to draw a card from the deck. But of course, at the beginning of the game, you're not going to be able to start with advertisers in play. You're going to need some kind of boost. And that's where the geishas come in. 
Each player is going to, you'll, you'll randomly distribute one of these geishas out to each player. You'll keep it face up in front of you, and that's like your character for the game. And over here, you'll see that each character has their own little starting stats, which are going to help you play guest cards right off the bat. So, for instance, uh, Akinoshi something or other, Morningstar, starts off with three in each stat. Her special ability is she gets to add three to one reputation value during your turn. That's what these are called, reputations. But you can only use that once per round. Um, another example is... Hazy Obero or Obero Hazy, who is has a whopping five in each uh, reputation, and but she does have to start the round with two extra cards in her hand. Now this is kind of a detriment because the round ends when a player runs out of cards, and you want to try to dump your cards as quickly as possible while you still have a high score. Uh, just one more example here. Harukazi Spring Breeze has one, three, and five for reputation. When she draws a card after taking advertisement action, you get to draw two extra cards. Then put two cards from your hand at the bottom of the deck. So you have these different special abilities that you can use, and they'll help you put out more and more guests and increase your other special abilities as well. Whenever you play a guest, you don't draw a card, only when you play a card down as an advertiser. So slowly, as you're ideally playing guests, you're going to be running out of cards from your hand, and whoever, run, like I said, whenever whoever runs out of cards of, out of uh, their hands, immediately will end the round. Now you have a couple other uh, tertiary actions you can take as well. Uh, instead of the uh, playing guess or advertising, you could instead intro what they call the introduce action, which is that you take two cards from your hand and exchange them with two cards from the deck. You could just exchange an advertiser that you've already played with one from your hand, or you can just search, which is you have no other better play, and you just draw a card from the deck. Hope you get something good that's going to let you, that you can actually play, and that's going to get you ahead. But that's basically how the game is going to work. Things are going to keep going around. Um, I guess I should have mentioned as well that if you, the guest cards actually have, I don't know why I laid out the, the geishas, but the guest cards actually have special abilities if you play them as a guest. So... For instance, the Yakuza here says target player discards his newest advertiser, or uh, so the Samurai says take the newest guest from a target player and add it to your guest. Its effect does not happen. So there's a lot of take that effects to this game. The Doctor says take an additional turn. But you notice that a lot of the cards that have very powerful abilities need a lot of uh, different uh, reputation bonuses in order to play them. The Merchant says target player draws two cards, which usually could be a bad thing because it could actually extend the round if you see someone's about to run out of cards. And the Okasa says you get to take an extra advertisement action. So it's not just about trying to get guests out or get advertisers out to play the guests. It's also about deciding which card abilities you really want to use or would you rather use those cards as advertisers. The first person to successfully figure that out, that whole balancing act of getting points by playing down advertisers, is going to be the winner. And that's my star. Now, I've played a lot of different Seiji Kanai games. I've actually imported a lot of games that haven't even been domestically released yet, and they all share similar gameplay elements. They're all what you would call micro games. Some people say that Seiji Kanai started the micro game trend, and they're, so they're all very small, they're all very light, they can be played very quickly, and I would actually say that My Star is one of his few games that sort of bucks that trend. I mean, it's still very small. I mean, it fits in this box. This is the special AEG uh, size uh, card, small card game box, but it has more cards than any of his other games, and consequently, or maybe just be, not consequently, but because of what the game is, it's longer than his other games as well. And that puts it in a weird place, because... I would like to call this a filler game, and maybe if you played with the minimum amount of players, is three, then it would just barely be considered a filler game. But with more players, and by playing the full amount of rounds that it recommends for scoring, this is actually longer than what I would deem a filler game to be. This could be over an hour. An hour, maybe a little bit over an hour, maybe not that long. But I wouldn't necessarily say this is the game that you bust out to play when you're killing time for more people to show up or to wait for another game to finish. This is a little bit too long for that. Uh, so this is like a real meaty game. Now that could be good or bad. I mean, you might think this is a bit misleading, thinking that this is going to be a very simple game. But on the other hand, I like the extra depth that this game has. And ultimately, I do like this game. It's got some caveats to it I'm not necessarily happy with, but mainly with some balance issues. But ultimately, this is another good game from Kanai, and I think that it's one that you should check out. Now, let's break it down. Uh, starting with the... Break it down now. <laughs> no, starting with the components and the artwork. A lot of people complain when they when AEG replaces the artwork of the original with their new artwork. I complain sometimes, too. Like, I like the original Love Letter artwork myself, but I do think that this is high-quality work here. Um, I think that the whole retheming the Legend of the Five Rings thing, I mean, you would never even notice. It just looks like feudal Japan-style 
uh, characterization. And that's fine. It looks good. I really can't complain. Um, maybe one day it'll do the same thing and release the original artwork if this game is popular enough. Who knows? But either way, in this case, I'm not going to complain about it too much. Uh, heart, the cards are high quality. I do like these little boxes from AEG, so I really can't complain about the artwork or the components. Now, the gameplay itself. This is another, you know, again, just like a lot of his other games, there's not a lot of theme here other than the artwork. You never feel like you're actually running in a geisha establishment. What this basically is, is set collecting cards. You're trying to get a certain amount of advertising cards, which will enable you to get better guests. And of course, there are take that elements. You are trying to be the first one to go out to stop the rounds. I mean, assuming that you're ahead and you want the round to end. So therefore, you're going to be doing some nasty things to your opponents if you can. Loading their hand up with more cards kicking back cards to their hand, which costs some time and turns, things like that. Um, th normally I don't like those kind of mechanics to sort of take that mechanics, but I think that it works well in this because the game just, even though, like I said, the game could feel long overall, uh, the actual rounds are very quick. Your turns are very quick. You can always have some sort of response to that. Um, there's different things that you can do on your turn. Like you, you know, you have the option if you have no better play to just draw cards from the deck. Stuff like that. So I don't think it's, it's sort of mitigated there, the take that elements of it. Um, and the gang up on the leader elements, which is possible. If someone, if you know going from round to round that someone is ahead, that person is going to be the target. But again, it's not that bad in this one. You never feel too frustrated because you're still strategizing. You're still figuring out which cards to hold on to, what to work towards, the goals in your hands. Do you want to go for blue, green, or red? Do you want to have the different special abilities? Do you go for those high cost cards, which are going to take you a long time to build up with, but have really powerful effects you know there's not much that an opponent can do to stop you because if they're just spending their time focusing on you they're not putting themselves ahead either which is a lesson that you learn very very quickly so i think that all that works pretty well for what it is now my problem with the game as far as the mechanics is that it can be very unbalanced not just with the different power uh customers that you can put out like the um the ones that lets you get an extra turn and stuff like that those are really really powerful um, it, but again, it takes work to put them out, but what's most unbalanced in the game are the actual geisha cards that you have. Some of them are clearly better than others, like the geisha who gives you, starts off with really good stats, like a four in every stat. That's like incredible. And yeah, she has a negative aspect is that she starts with extra cards, but starting off with extra cards at the beginning of a round is not that bad. You don't want extra cards later on, but phew, you have plenty of time to worry about that. And you, with high stats, you're going to be putting them out much more frequently. So I think that with her and with a couple of other geisha, there's definitely an issue there with balance. And I don't know if the, the response there is to take that geisha out of the game, but it's definitely something to consider because that I've seen, I've played this game several times now, and that geisha either really wins all the time or does very, very well, like second place. And that's just very unbalanced to me. Um, and like I said, some of the actual customer cards can be unbalanced as well. But nevertheless, for what this is, uh, for you know, the, just the simple set collection, I think that it works well. Um, I think that you there's a lot of things you can do on your turn, like I said, so there is some um, decision making without get, getting too heavy or getting too prone to analysis paralysis. Um, and you don't have to play over the full allotment of rounds for scoring, but I do think that the game kind of shines when you do give it some breathing room and play out the full game. So ultimately, I think this is a good game, not a great game. It's probably going to stay in my collection because it's small, because I like Seiji Kanai's other work, but chances are, it, you know, if, definitely if I'm looking for a filler, I'll go for his other games first. Love Letter, Lost Legacy, um, those are, and, and Master Merchant, those are just better games for that type of play scenario filling of having a filler but i could definitely see this game coming out with people who are just being introduced to you know modern board gaming and card games um i would say this would be a gateway game so it's a game that's not just simple but has a more strategic depth than say love letter does um with that extra time commitment but it's meatier so i think it's a good stepping stone towards even bigger bet grander card games and board games than that so it's definitely worth checking out. If you'd like Sage and other work, I think you'll like this as well. My name is Nick. This has been Board Game Brawl. And I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day in every way. Take care.